think of. Richard Hart is a comic book hero. Well, what do they all have, right? What do they call it? What do you nerds fucking call it? It's a Genesis story. It's a backstory. It's a, a, a origin story. Not to be conflated with OA. Because Richard Hart has nothing to do with that, right? Listen, the origin story of Fearless Leader is fucking dope. And I can't be the only person who saw it this way. I heard it this way. Now, in telling this, I don't know. If I ever, God bless, if I would ever hear back from him, maybe he would say, dude, don't fucking tell that that way ever again. Because I add on all kind of flourishes, okay? But it's to get the point across, romanticize it a little bit, because I'm sorry, it deserves to be romanticized a little bit at this point. Guys, the origin story of Fearless Leader comes down to one moment, okay? In this guy's, what I'm assuming would have been his adolescence. It's at a very, very important crossroads and time of development in any young man's life. What was on display through this chapter in Richard's life was this man's moxie, determination, wherewithal, and creativity. And without this moment, I would have to suggest, guys, I'm not sure that we would have Hex. Go back in time. I think we're talking about the 1990s. We're in the state of Florida. Shit, fire. It is hot outside. And it just so happens that a young Richard Hart's father is in the heating and air conditioning business. They are getting slammed. This guy's an independent. And guess who one of his main employees is? A somewhat hesitant <laughs> participant in the entire business is young Richard Hart. His father needs a man. He need, that's a big boy he's got. He needs some of that muscle to help him get these huge ass units all around all these contracts, all these buildings, man. It can be miserable work. I don't know if you guys have ever been on a roof in 130 degrees. I don't know if you guys have ever had to crawl down a duct. I've had to do this kind of stuff. Um, it's not delightful, you know, probably put it up there with drywall finishing and, and, and snake and toilets, to be honest with you, but I've done most of it. Now, mind you, Richard's not only present in doing this and helping his old man out of loyalty to his family. Truth told, Richard Hart is coming of age and Richard Hart has noticed Susie Sunshine from school school year is almost over man richard wouldn't mind spending a little bit of quality time with Susie sunshine Susie funshine sunshine dude he's worked hard all school year to get himself angled that it would even be appropriate that he's going to ask this girl but by god this guy is burgeoning quivering on the edge of his future potency his expression of his manhood his sexuality he's right there man what is he 16 17 maybe 15 i don't know it's an important time so he's trying to make a little bit of what eh a little walking around vigorous yeah baby Susie, sunshine funshine ain't dropping panties for any old schmuck now you gotta do things even young richard has come to understand this Mensa or not, the politics of dancing are a different thing entirely. Got a couple paychecks under his belt since school let out. On this break, everybody's getting their shit. The Freon, it's like Freon is in this man's life constantly. Just cables upon cables of fucking heavy duty fucking electrical cords got to go up ladders and down through fucking narrow hallways and up into attics and on top of roofs and it's dying they're dying from this heat this sucks okay but he's gonna make it happen 
maybe way back in his consciousness. It's for his old man and his mama, but truth told, <laughs> uh, suffice it to say, uh, if you saw old Funshine, you'd be motivated too. Um, Dad's under the gun, and sometimes, you know, even though it might be a little bit beyond his son's capabilities, <laughs> That 400 pound unit has to make it up there into that <laughs> cranny come hell or high water. So Richard one day finds himself positioned precariously behind a what? Dolly, a hand truck. You guys know what these are. I might even have a shot for those of you who are too buck toothed to, to know. Oh, yo, look at that. For those of you in the audience who have never had to do an actual day of real work, we will offer to you, ta-da, the dolly. <sighs> Elder Hart has always been kind of impressed. This kid was going through clothes sizes fast. And here's his boy, this young stud, He's going to be fine with that thing. Even though the last seven guys that were working on my crew might have got hurt or quit, Richard's going to be able to handle this. He's a smart boy, and he's a strong boy. So he's just thinking about fucking Funshine, man. He don't care about nothing. He's a, Okay, he's getting it up there. This is the third one today. Richard... He prematurely lets go of this thing and it kicks in such a way that the full force of this unit hits that tar up there on that roof and the back of Bacow. What the f oh. 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 oh, oh, yeah, that's what reminded me. That's what brought all this into mind, guys. <laughs> See that? I lost the rest of that fucker just the other day. That's what I thought about doing this. Back to my story. Oh, what the? F oh, oh my Jesus God! Oh my Jesus God! Oh my Jesus God! Oh my God! Fuck no! Fuck! Oh my shit! There they are! Richard Hart exclaims. There's my fucking teeth! Oh, what? Oh shit! Dad! Dad! Fuck! Damn it, Dad! What'd you do there, boy? Oh, oh shit, you're bleeding, huh? All right, hold on. What? No, no, tell Carl. Uh, yeah, no, tell him to say that again. Tell him to say that. All right, all right. Yes, one, three, next Tuesday. Yes. Okay, I don't care if it's Cinco de Mayo. That's not going to get these invoices. Pay. All right, you understand. Thank you. Okay, bye. Richard, what the fuck? Did oh, son, what did you do to yourself? Dad, that fucking dollar can walk, walk my fucking fist out. What the fuck? Dad, what am I going to do? Well, I don't know. That happened to a couple guys on my crew when I was younger. Um, You got a handkerchief? Dad, I'm not really worried about that right now. This is fucking insane. Dad, I'm supposed to take fucking Susie, Funshine, Sunshine, out to a movie next week. You got to help me, Dad. Well, I, I can appreciate that you would think that and say that, son. That makes perfect sense to me. Um, However, yeah, I know, I'm... Honey, listen. I love you. Now listen. All the all the money's out on materials, kid. I got fifty jobs. I gotta wrap. Yeah, you like eating food. You like eating groceries. Listen, Richard, dude, be a man about this. You're gonna have to work this out. It's not the end of the world. Dad has never seen Susie Funshine Sunshine before. Okay. Holy shit, man. This is totally fucked up, man. What the fuck am I going to fucking do? Look at me. Jesus Christ. Huh. Still pretty good looking, I gotta say. That's a pretty fly mullet. 
Oh, look at this. <laughs> Led Zeppelin, baby. <laughs> yeah. All right, what the fuck, man? That is not going to help me with this shit. That's totally fucked up, man. He's the one that's made me smash my fucking cheeks out of the food place. Oh, no, I just had a thought. Demetrius Way Green wants to take Susie Funshine Sunshine out, too. Man, fuck that shit. I can't let this happen, man. What am I going to do? Guys, <laughs> you don't understand what's happening at this moment. This guy could scarcely understand what the future would bring. Although a portion of his own strong will, his constitution, his wherewithal, his toughness, his creativity, that part of him is resolute, man. He's not going to be defeated. And he's definitely not going to be sucking on Susie Funshine Sunshine's titties with a swinging gate. All right. I could work for my dad for six days a week for the next 42 years. Um, I would probably be able to pay off the Civic. I'd probably be able to get a couple more Led Zeppelin t-shirts. I really want to get that van. Driving on the beach in that van kicks ass, dude. Listen to some tunes. Shit. I'm afraid that after looking at them costs, after calling the dentist, orthodontist office, though, I'd have to work for 42 years to fucking be able to pay this. This is bullshit. What can I do, man? I could probably be a pimp. Yeah, what the fuck, man? It's just like get a couple hoes and... Oh, uh, but that wouldn't fly with mom. Not around the house. I don't know. Let me walk around here and see what's going on. The young man goes down to a storage facility. It's It's an area, let's say, that his dad has tucked in where all the tools and supplies are in this business. Oh, look at that. There's a whole line of those hand carts. Fuck you, hand carts, assholes. You're the one that did this to me. Richard goes into his area and he's looking around and you can almost see the smoke coming out of this young man's ears. And his eyes fall upon Sherwin Vega, tweeters, mid-range speakers. Look at that. There's a box of shit from Radio Shack he has right there. Oh, my God. There's that amp that he spray painted red with that Krylon paint. You know, I bet there's a lot of guys in this neighborhood that would dig this shit. They would pay probably top dollar for it. After all, I have a discerning taste, and this is top-of-the-line sonic equipment. Ready to roll, baby. Master Ace, born to roll. Rolling down the block like what else can a brother do? It's Saturday. It's Saturday. Richard decides to take these belongings of his out to the front yard. He makes a couple calls. Hey, Humpy. I'm sorry. I blew my character. Hey, Humpy. Listen. No, I know I sound stupid. It's because my front teeth got busted out working for my sucking dad using one of them sucking hand trucks. I know, I'm supposed to fucking get with uh, Susie Funshine this weekend. I'm totally screwed. Listen, you remember how I used to have the Civic really banging with all that sound equipment? Dude, I'm getting rid of all that shit. Yeah, right? You really liked that shit, didn't you? That stuff was banging when I had it in there. You hear me coming from three miles away. Well, listen, I'm parting with it all. Yeah, no, come on over. Boom, guys, what just happened? Richard Hart instantly facing down difficulty became an entrepreneur humpy came over guess what humpy did richard was making signs thinking he'd have to advertise the shit out front humpy took everything humpy took everything and richard now has 385 dollars in his pocket where he had lint before scalability is what's next because Richard Hart doesn't stop there. Richard Hart thinks Humpy has a cousin. That cousin was like an audiophile. This guy had everything. He had all them big fat tube bins that you put out back. He had all kind of custom K2 
cases that he'd make for the for the for the uh, base bins. He had all kinds of amplifiers. The guy had copper coming out his ears. Maybe Tumpy would let him talk to this this kid, and Richard could keep this thing rolling. Richard finds kind of what we could call a supplier. Now it's not a forever deal, but Richard managed to pull about eight to ten pieces off this kid. And then when he's in the process, somebody sees what's going on and decides to sell Richard a couple things that he gets for bottom dollar. And we're now on day two since Richard knocked his teeth out with the hand truck. Richard sells it all. Round two completed. Richard, for almost nothing, is probably up around 1260. This is two days, and this isn't even a 20-year-old man yet. He thinks maybe getting these front teeth fixed is possible. Guys, I could keep going, but you do get the point, don't you? Without this difficulty and the character of that boy or that man to face it that way, you wouldn't have Hex. You wouldn't be a Hexican. DeFi wouldn't look what it looks like. If you go back, Richard wouldn't have ran you know, all of his successful businesses that got him into a pretty damn good position by his mid-20s. He also wouldn't have had the foibles and follies and mistakes of his life that made him stronger and bigger and faster and better. You wouldn't have developed the rest of this personality, this charismatic leader figure, if it wasn't for that hot ass afternoon with his father where he blasted his front teeth out standing on the precipice of woo, Susie Funshine, sunshine say whoa okay it wouldn't have brought to the fore these hidden talents that this smart ass big kid had and there it was guys so what I am postulating and suggesting to the Hex community is, of course, let's never forget Mr. Scholler. Of course, let's never forget that Richard, like many of us, comes from salt of the earth, from working people. And he'll never lose that sensibility, that honesty, that ability to communicate. But guys, we can't forget the hand truck ladies and gentlemen hexagons and pulse chaniacs i thought child suggest to this community that one of the installations at the hex museum be the very hand truck in question and if irrecoverable i would suggest that we go for the most reasonable and similar facsimile that we can locate richard hart I am on the mainland. I know that you have a lot of folks over here. I would certainly be more than happy. I have uh, some experience in the trades, okay? I would be more than happy to get my ass down to Florida if I could have an audience with your dad, see if we could locate in his garage or tool shed or warehouse, maybe the hand truck that knocked your front teeth out and started a trajectory of success, of overcoming, and of changing the fucking world for the better. That hand truck. I will go down there. I will pick it up. I will pack it. I will send it to whomever, uh, wherever we're going to be. I'm hearing Europe for this project. I brought this up in Pulse Chat, Maine, at least twice last year, and I believe I posted in Telegram and Twitter about it, tagging at least Kinetics, I can recall probably around the same time i haven't brought it up in the last year but now that there's talk of the museum thoughts out is bringing it up again okay i don't care if we got to get that bitch plated in gold we have to have an installation with the hand truck that knocked out richard hart's front teeth guys fucking mm, love it all right divergent Hexagons, Pulse Chaniacs, my brothers, my six sisters, 7B and coming. We're going to play a song or two, and then we can get on to some panel stuff. I will uh, share the StreamYard linkums. 
all right, in the main body of the YouTube chat. Thank you, everybody. If you stayed for the entire anecdote, um, largely one big flourish. Not sure how much basis in reality it actually has. Perhaps Richard will confirm or deny that someday. But I think it's a fucking crafty suggestion, guys. That, that's a real tactile thing that's from the history of this movement at its inception, right? The hand truck that knocked out fearless leader Richard Hart's fucking teeth that made him start selling the stereo equipment. Boom. What?